good. All right, hey, welcome into another edition of Caskey's Clicker. Uh, got a special guest again, uh, Mr. Rohan Davy. Excited to have you back. I'm excited to be back. Yeah, we got you for we got you for a little while. So good thing is we're starting with LSU, and I'm sure you've got your own thoughts about that. And, I do, uh, I do, I have, got, I do, I do. You got your shirt on there. I, I like it representing. Uh, sometimes I always try to put it on when we lose. Yeah. Yeah, because you know a lot of people don't like to wear their armor out when they lose. I rep it more when we lose. Well, I'm, my alma mater's A&M, and uh, I yeah, think don't worry about people that. might be ripping me if I wore that. Yeah, don't worry about right. that in here, baby. <laughs> yeah, Jimbo's yeah. my guy, but I won't wear that either. Yeah, well, uh, so we're going to start with the LSU offense today, and I got a, I got a list of stuff here, and I think some <laughs> of this stuff has been just ad nauseum over the past couple of days, but yeah. we're going to start with the – I, I want to talk about the third down protection on a few of these things. All right, and then we'll go to the Citizens Bank – Telestrator, so appreciate them being a part of the team now. Uh, first time, first, first third down here we're going to talk about is just the protection here, and I thought this Solid. was amazing. Solid. I'm going to show you this from a different angle here in just a second, but if if you've got that kind of protection right there, that what you're talking about here is you shouldn't have to get happy feet, I guess. Is no, no, no. I, I totally agree. This was actually one of the times. And even here, moving out the pocket is unnecessary. Yeah. Um, slide, keep your head up. This is a great angle. I mean, this, listen, it doesn't get any cleaner than this, baby. Take your Ooh. step to the left, a nice step to the left, and that's it. And sit up there and wait for your guys to get open. Ooh. I, want you, I want you to take a look here. I know, I see it, baby. With, with this guy right here, mm. If, mm. If, you, if you just have the just a ah. tiny bit of patience, a tiny bit of patience, and hit that. He's running free right there. He's still well, running. And here's the thing. Let's say this guy did play back. This guy's <sighs> this guy's coming, but that's why they have that crossing route there well, is, is to open that up. And I think this is a good example, honestly, because me as a quarterback here, if I understand that I'm taking a shot, right, and I see that what they bring it for, mm -hmm. so I know I'm protected, right? Yep. All I'm doing is sliding to the left a little to give myself away from these the guard and the tackle right here to my right. And I'm putting that ball, like Coach just said, I'm reading this middle safety and I'm dropping this dime over the top and if this guy underneath bails and takes it away, I'm dropping this crossing right on the 45 yard line and I may have the same result. Yeah, so if, if this guy were to play back and take that away, then you throw it It's such a great, great, this is this started off like this coach is wonderful because this is when when you know a lot of people hear me and yourself talk about better play better play and people out and they see well he's this and we're this but these are the plays coaches pointing out that it prevents you from winning a football game and and this is the play too the week before last week right. that Brian Kelly was saying throw listen it. Throw, throw it throw it if you throw an interception. <laughs> we'll live with it. It's a Basically, punt. He was telling it's, them to do it. It's better than a punt. Let, let's just say. Let's just say he throws the interception. Right. Say this guy breaks on. He throws the interception right there. Right. Right here. I mean, the ball's here. That's a punt. That's a punt. That's a punt. That's all it is. Okay. So yeah, you don't want to throw interceptions, but at the same time, take you know the what, too, bro? It's also knowing your guys. To me, you know what I mean. You know, this yeah. is Malik. Give Malik an opportunity. I that's think like that was Kayshawn. That was Kayshawn. I think that was Kayshawn. Kayshawn. Yeah. Even even worse. <laughs> give him, no. give him an opportunity. You don't think that solves the disgruntledness that you're going through? You having these personal meetings with these guys. This is what they're talking about. Just, just yeah, all they want is a chance. Give me a chance, baby. It's, it's like, it's like if, if you watch, we'll get in later on. But Geno Smith with Seattle Ooh. against uh, against the Saints, he's throwing up some stuff that shouldn't be thrown, but he's throwing it up, and they made plays, and and that's what I think the LSU guys are just waiting for, and it, and it goes to this play too. And th this is one I showed yesterday morning, but I won't go into it a little bit further. We're talking about the third and one play, okay? Everybody's yep. talking about the third and one before halftime. Now, the thing about this play is, number one, you got to just get the – you got two plays to get the yard. Apparently, if, if you decide you're going to throw it on third and one, you're, is, that's exactly you're going right. for it on fourth down. That's exactly You're right. going for it. So, if you ever see somebody throw it on third down like this, then just know – Already okay, made up. We got two plays to get the yard. So, when you watch this – you got two stacked receivers over here. You got two DBs over the top. You got one safety deep. This is an unbalanced look, which means you've got one. He's act. That guy's Tight actually in. ineligible. Right. So you got nobody. There's no eligible receivers on this side. 
we're going to motion across over here. And when you motion across, obviously just straight up man coverage, man coverage right? Yeah. One of the biggest and most used plays when you're on third and one and you're trying to sell a run is you sell hard play action with everybody up front and then you run a crossing route versus man and you hope that somebody – the separation. You get separation or you hope they somehow or another there's a natural rub, rub somewhere in the middle there. And then what you end up doing is you – as the quarterback, obviously you want to you – you're taking a look at that safety too. Does that safety play into a certain side? If that safety's playing right in the middle – and there, it looks even to pick your best dude and take a shot, you know. And uh, right here, I'll show it from a different angle. But again, you know the the, the problem. <laughs> I the problem. I the pocket is great. Pocket's great. Pocket's great. The problem I have with this is the same thing. It goes back to the last play. Happy, happy, happy feet. But also here, I think the play design on this coach. I think you have him crossing shallower. Well, then they have them going. I know they're trying to create that rug. They're not even doing that. I'm going to show you. They're not even doing that. So watch, watch it from this angle here. This guy is actually going to. He's going to run the crossing route. He's running up here and then running like, like that. So he's whip. trying. He's Did trying it? to whip out of it. When I think if you if you pause it when they get to this point right here, mm. if he just keeps running here and he just keeps running here, those two dudes may run into each other. So. And it gives you the opportunity with Jaden to find somebody if he's going to have happy feet and get out the pocket. Well, he's got somebody running with him at least. Well, it's a, it's not a good play design. It's definitely not a good play design. I didn't see this until you pointed it out, Coach. But the thing is, right, you have two receivers. Now, essentially, your underneath receiver is whipping back out underneath your deep receiver. Mm -hmm. And you have all th – these guys aren't displaced. They're all in the same area. So, even if you – who that's, that's uh, Malik. Mm -hmm. Even if you have him come deep, coach, over the top, you still have this safety yep. that's attached that could fall off and take that now the deep safety passes off to the other receiver. So that's why in the beginning of the play, if those guys are coming up, now we talk about stair step. You stair step him up. We, we at least want to build, we, we, we want to build in a deep play, but we want to be able to hit, like you say, coach, hit the crossing route coming across right in front of this referee right here. Behind the linebackers in front of the referee, create that rub, and he's coming out to your right side. So he tries to stair step. He tries to stair step right on the hash. You can see it, right? Watch when he comes right here. He tries to push up and then do that. Yeah. You can see it right there. Right, yeah, yeah. But he got he, pushed yeah. too deep. And, and, and there, Tennessee. It, it, it's just bad. It's just bad. And even, even on the whip route that you point out, he whips out and he's looking for the ball. Clearly in practice, they expected him to get it when he comes out of the whip. Correct. And it didn't happen. Or, or they were expecting – I don't know if it was a different coverage, but that if, right. if you get man coverage right there, we, we had a deal in at moving. least in the NFL, we had it. We had something where if if you were if you had that crossing route like that, and it was cover two or if it, or cover three or zone, put that yeah. way. If it was zone, then those routes then did convert into some form. Of some, somebody stopped. Correct. One of the two did stop, but. Right there, if it was man, you were running and you were you were crossing each other and you were creating, you were trying to create. But they always say, Coach, green grass keep going. Correct. Yes. Green grass keep going. You feel that trail behind you, and he's behind you. Why would you not whip back out into him? Yeah. Keep the rub going. You you did the motion to identify man. But I, I don't put that I don't put that on the receiver. Neither do I. He he was running a route. He was running the route. He was told to run. run. So, but, but, but and how hard of a throw is that to make if he has to throw that whip rod all the way across the field from the right hash all the way to the left sideline? Well, he that, hadn't proven he really do that. They, they they had seen. I just know this as a as a coach that's been in that room for a long time. You see a lot of things on film, and you say they're gonna do this, they're gonna do this, and then when they don't do it, they, there's got to be some adjustment to it. And the thing about NFL receivers versus college receivers is NFL receivers have probably seen it enough to Correct. say, you know what, I'm a, as I'm running, I'm not going to whip this. I'm going to throw my they hand. They could adjust. I'm going to throw my hand Correct. up. And that tells the quarterback, look, I'm going. That's right. I'm, listen, I'm, I ain't stopping here. I'm going. I'd, they would have kept coming across. Yeah. Is what you're saying. Yeah. He would have kept coming across. Like, I'm, you know I'm not what whipping I mean? out on this. I'm right. not going to whip out on this guy. He's right. going to cover me. So, listen, right. I'm Because if you watch um, – well, you play with Brady. So, you know, the, those, those receivers that play with Brady – you, you watch those guys because I was with Amendola for two years Correct. in Detroit. Everything he, had an adjustment, right? Yeah. So those guys were great at reading defense and identifying. And that when, they, when they say quarterback and receiver on the same page, 
That's what they talking about. So if that was Amendola, if that was Troy Brown, if that was Wes Welker, any of those guys, and they read that, they're not st- – and Tom would know. I mean, I would know. I wasn't playing, but I would know. <laughs> they're going to keep going. And it would have been – it's an easier throw. He's in your face. It just makes sense. It's the natural rub, like Coach said. The paycheck still came in, though, didn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're good. Oh, yeah. We're good. <laughs> no, but it, it, what, my, <laughs> got one every but, week. But my point, my point is, is like you, you, he would always with Stafford. They had a deal. I mean, if he knew something wasn't right and he was gonna have to get out of his route, yeah, they had like. I mean, you would see his like hand barely Correct. go up. It wasn't like he was waving. Right. Not like I'm he was gone. Doing that mailboxing. It right. was just like I'm a, gone. Not doing it. And you know, you could tell. And he and Stafford knew it. And I know if Stafford knew it, Brady knew that. Correct. Too. So like you know, but anyway, there, there's a lot to those plays. Uh, going going to this one, I think this one's been talked about quite a bit too. Uh, Kayshawn's gonna come up here and run a slant, slant route, and this is a third and what two, third and slightly three. behind him, slightly behind him, but but hot. just just look at you talk about. Yeah, I don't even know who's covering him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you're talking about this is a, this is one that was predetermined. You know what I mean? But it, it's either either way, he <laughs> catches that ball right. I mean, I'm not saying he scores, but you're talking about that's a big play. Plus, it would have been a conversion. I mean, even my man Orlovsky, that's, I keep telling you, he <laughs> screws up my freaking clicker up here. He's circling him. But if you see this from the end zone, there's an yeah. end zone shot of this. That you'll see where this ball is actually thrown. It's kind of – it looks and like – you know, the, the, the only thing, Coach, on that that I think probably could have scared him a little. That, that blitz? Yeah, yeah. Was a little, but that's when – they say that second window, let him come. Correct. Right over the middle. And and there's a – And then if you're going to throw this, man, give this, give him a better ball. But even now, look where he's throwing it. Right. He's, he, there's nobody, right. you know, yeah, Charles Turner's foot's window. right there. Correct. That's the closest thing to him, you know. Correct, and, correct, correct. But that, that's, one of those, that's one of those throws, again, that, that the week before, I know everybody had talked about getting the ball, just putting it on your receivers. Now, I think Kayshawn, again, just like the Malik – neighbors catch the week before I think you throw that to him 10 more times he catches half of them you know you know but it's still you got to put it on him you know and especially going across that middle man guys you already know coach receivers going across that middle like that expecting to get blowed up I mean they've always tell me roll put it low don't put it high behind me you know no doubt because the thing is when you got your arms in there right everything's exposed exactly man Man. exactly I told people all the time I was like I was walking on at A&M, and I said, I said, listen, if y'all just want somebody to run across the field and just get blown up, I said, I'm your guy. I'm your guy. <laughs> Sign me up for it. I'm your dude. Just run me on the cross, or I'll take, I'll take somebody out and open somebody else up. I'm right. good. You know, but <laughs> no, so, uh, I'll be that guy. Now, so here's what's happening here is, is Kayshawn's coming in motion here. So this, this is that fourth down play mm-hmm. where Kayshawn catches it. Now, what's going to happen is Emory Jones is going to set back, and he trips him. One of the things that these guys have got to understand, these guys don't know the pass routes. Correct. So when, when, you, when you're saying, I don't know what they call this, we used to call it a slide. So he comes in most, and then he slides out to the flat. Mm-hmm. He's got to know that he's setting, that this isn't, this isn't necessarily a naked. Because if it's a naked and you're sliding, they're all going this right. way, and you're really not going to have an issue. But if you watch the way this plays out, he's setting back in pass pro. He has to know right now, I got to get a little, a little deeper. Depth. I yeah. just got to bubble back just a, a touch. Deeper. And I, I put that on, I put that on Kayshawn. And then the fact, you know, he gets up and everybody's talking about the, you know, the ball and all that. So the, pro, the problem is it's not where necessarily From the, the ball gets to. It's where the ball, when it crosses this, when it crosses the line. So there's a, there's a, there's an official somewhere down here looking straight down this line. And wherever that ball crosses the line, problem is he did probably have it out far enough, and in the sideline shot would show it. Yeah, it didn't cross. But you don't know that where it crossed that line, and I think that's where. And I'll be honest with you, from the sideline, it didn't look close. I I didn't think it did either, but it didn't look close to me. They called it short, and they had no video evidence to say anything otherwise, and that's that's where a lot of this stuff. But it starts with with the trip. It you does. know what I mean? It starts with the trip because if he doesn't trip, he's out clean and make and he watch, picks up the first. Down. Watch, watch Jaden Daniels right here. Watch, watch, watch his eyes. I'm gonna try to pause it, right when he falls down. He's gonna throw that ball to him yeah, right there. Mm-hmm. He's gonna hit him right there. Yep. And he probably you see you see that. Yep. He's taking this guy with him. Yeah. He picks up the first. Because because watch who makes the play here. I mean it's it's just it's a guy falling off or a safety from way back there. Exactly. He catches that. He probably does get the first. So 
again, it's, it's little things. And now let's get in a little bit into the offensive line. The, obviously, what happened with – uh, Big Cam with Big Cam, with Will Campbell, yeah. and then with Garrett Dellinger yeah. right afterwards. You know, you got Scooter in here, you got Anthony Bradford in here, and you're talking about a couple guys that you know haven't played a lot this year. They played now; they have played. Don't get me wrong; they played. Haven't played a lot, but what they're what you get when you get these kind of pro, when you get these things is you, you got him going here. You got pick games coming yeah, all around. Chasing Orlovsky wasn't right on all of his pick games here. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Dan, but you see how his shoulders are turned right there. It's over. It, you, that's one of the things that you and you see the center. You see the center's butt right there. The gates opened up, and baby. and right there when you get picked, when you get picked, it's hard to get back because right there you got two yeah, guys pushing over. through that hole, pushing through that gap. Right, they're doing that on purpose. Yep. They're eating him up and they're eating him up, and then he steps up to eat him up. See, this is the biggest part of this. He steps up first. A lot of these guys, like you watch high school kids trying to do this, and they think I got a gap, and then this right. guy on the snap just goes engage, you know, like yeah. engage first, let it let it develop, and then come around, and then come as as tight, tight as you yeah. can, just like he's doing right there, and it's just that's that's tough. So, th I think that had more to do with those two guys over there, and then again, the left side of the line here had the same issues. Uh, dealing with dealing with pick game again this oh, is this is Dellinger yeah. but I just want to make a point of about he's got that cast on that hand you know what I mean and you can't grab now get holdings not legal but if you get your hand under and inside can't and you're moving it. your feet can't see it you're fine yeah. but right now when this when this pick happens and you see how he's turned again he's trying to hit this guy which is what he's supposed to do but he, he his 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 body gets turned and then he can't get back and even if he did, you know it would just he held on too long, you know. And, that, and the thing about this thing is it's simple, you know. It's very this simple. This is one of the basic ET stunts and this is simple stunt with the tackle in the end, which is a linebacker but could be the end. It's a simple stunt, man. It's twist inside. You hit him down with it, and I I mean I I don't really give him any any grace on this one coach because it's simple and I know they practice this and I don't know if it was a spur of, if it was the timing in the game and him coming in and all that but this is simple man we got to yeah. pick this up and, and these are the things that is it's hard it's really really hard versus a scout team during a week to practice these things because yeah. they don't happen this fast this Slow. is the stuff that happens in training camp then and it may happen in spring practice too because you can put on the full pads but you got to be padded up, yeah. and you got to be going full speed to to learn how to pick. You got to have your real live guys like yeah. DJ and those guys. Got to be the one to you know be running the scout team for even get a look as fast. Yep. It's fast. You're right. Now I, I want to give uh, that we Emory Jones gets called for holding here. Okay, I'm, I'm I, I understand that, but I just want to make a point of we talk about him trying to get the ball down the field. Talking about Jaden Daniels. All right, so Josh Williams is in here. He's kind of getting knocked back. Okay, so I can slide. see slide over here. Slide. Easy slide. Now, Step up. You didn't have to go that far. And he, but on the run, he goes out and he makes a play and he throws it deep. Now it gets called back. But again, like you're saying, if if he, why does why does the tackle get called for holding? Steve's running, you, because he doesn't know, you know the quarterback running out here. That's exactly right. He's got his hands set, thinking. And the naturally, you want to step and not just step up. Step up. There's you got two blockers right here in front. You got two chasing behind. He's outside. Just step up. In the pocket, you don't have to go outside the pocket, which creates the hole. Step up, and you can still throw that ball. Yeah, and 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 honestly, the, great location. The thing about these receivers that I've learned about LSU's receivers is they're they're good at scramble drill because oh, they're they're fast. That's exactly and, right. And they can get away when they start to, and I, you could tell they work it because you know if you're if the rule is if you're deep you you come, come back. back if you're shallow you go deep if That's you're right. on the other side you're crossing you know if you're if you're low like if you're the back down here you run across low That's and right. all that, there's, there's all these rules and i they end up if you watch you know if you watch the big view the all 22 view you can see where they they end up and, and they're in the right spot so the they're thing doing that things. he should know about these receivers too is they all could freaking go up and get the ball like yeah. all of them gonna make a play on the ball every single one of them um this play here, because I, I call this a three up the middle. Uh, this this it's not really a three up the middle, but it ends up being the kind of the same thing. But this is a uh, this could this could be a tough pickup for an offensive line. 
So they end up doing this. They come from depth, and then they end up crossing yeah. here in the middle. Um, what's going to happen here, though, this is third and what, eight? Yeah, he gets it out, though. He's gets it out. But, but watch, watch, the, watch his demeanor. Watch the quarterback's demeanor. He's calm. He's collected. Gets He's stepping out. into his throw. Where this is was the, that? This was the best throw of the game. He can do it. That's that's why I'm, I'm trying to be positive here about it because there, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of Good. negativity kind of thrown his way, and I, I think some some of it's warranted. But I think the kid has the ability to 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 make the plays, and then th- this play kind of is a as a uh, running back coach slash guy who had to create runs. They're they're running a zone read, so they're doing this. He's going here. He's reading it. He's pulling it. But the thing about this, they're reading this guy. Right. This tight end is coming around here. This tight end's not going to touch this the the defensive end that I have the triangle over. He's going to come around here. He's blocking for the quarterback. So the quarterback's going to end up pulling this ball. Now, this guy just got to get on this guy. That's we always right. told him engage. Out, we told him outside shoulder. You're blocking for the quarterback to pull it. So you're not blocking for the running back. Right. Screw, screw the running back. Running back's on the other side somewhere. If he cuts it back, good for him. Right now, engage with this guy on his outside shoulder and just stay stay on him. And then you've got to know as the quarterback stay outside. that he's on the outside shoulder, so use him. Yep, stay outside. Use him right there. And, and right there, yeah, you get a face mask. I get it. It's probably a good thing he went inside. But what if he does go outside and he gets around the edge and let, let him run? A kid can run. You got block, you got blockers. It's just, it just that just drives Whoa. me crazy when, when they're not, you know. I think the tight end is doing everything he can to get to that outside shoulder. Now just use him. So there, there's a lot of little, little mistakes here. And again, they about ripped his head off there. So yeah. I think it's crazy that they. Uh, it's a great, it's a good play design. Oh no, it's it's a good if, play design. He stays outside. Is a good. I see what he sees inside a little bit. Yeah, but. Yeah, he stay outside, especially with Malik blocking on the outside. I think the the biggest thing too, because at this point Man, he's a running back, is yeah. he, you want to set up you want to set up your blocks. So if you push it just a little further, right? You know, if you go back just a, just a touch, just push it a little bit further. Just stretch just a little longer, because that's what it screws up stretch plays with running yeah. backs. Y'all know if they if they decide to cut too wide. soon, then you're screwed. Yeah. You know, it's, there's a, there's a there's like a sweet spot somewhere stretch, right here. Stretch, stretch, and then hit it. Get that guy. Yeah. Get the defender to to play outside just a little bit more, and then and then hit it up in there. And the thing I don't I don't understand is you get all these targeting fouls, and you kick these kids out, and they miss a whole half, or you know miss the rest of the game. And some of it's so little, it, it, they don't mean to. Like a guy dropped his head. But you can go rip the dude's head off right here. Nothing. 15. No big deal. There's going to be yeah. person foul 15. Grab the face mask all you want. I mean, that's a mm. – I mean, I, mm. I, I, that just drives – the targeting thing to me, if you want to kick the kid out of the game, so be it. Don't make him miss the next game. Right. You know, you don't do that in the NFL. You don't do that in high school. You, it's just it, – come on. Yeah. I mean, anyway. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, all right, so we're, we, we talk about um, – you know, the, the throws he, he's missed. Now, what they're doing is they're running a – he's going to run vertical. He's going to run up, and then he's going to run underneath. So, you're creating this vertical pick right here, which was, was a, this was a good play design here. Because you got man coverage, you got man coverage right here. And you can see how – you can see it from the other angle. I thought that was a pretty good run there by 86 to get in there. That was a good design, good play, good catch, good ball. Uh, on time, where you could run and catch with it, you know. This I just guy, don't understand why Taylor ain't jumping and ain't diving. And <laughs> so this guy right here was man coverage, and he was off. And when that guy ran this way, it forced him to go around. That's why he's chasing him yep. right here. And that's 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 exactly what you want to do. And again, yeah, I, th- I think you make a good point because I w- was it John Emery a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago. Yeah. Of just run your feet, run run through that guy. Yeah, yeah. that guy's going low. That's it. Just run through them, but I, that was that was good play design. So that that's what I got for LSU's offense. Again, I that was a rough day. Um, I think, first three plays are giving me PTSD. Which think, one? The, the, the just the, the first three. The, yeah, but you know what though, man? Oh. It seemed like even all that stuff that happened early in the football game—the fumble, the kick return, like you said, the punt return early. 
I still think the coaches panicked. I think they panicked. I think they panicked with all that BS going for it. I mean, over three on third down, over whatever on fourth down. So early in the football game, and I don't think that they were thinking about the coming back later on in the football game in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. I understand Tennessee has an up-tempo offense, great offense, but we're trying to build. You understand me? We're trying to build on what we've been doing the other side of the season. Kick the field goal. Get some points. Get them guys off the field. Put them back on the field. Like, I just think that it was so panicky by the, by the staff early in that football game. I think we were doing some good things early, Coach. Yeah. Getting the ball out of hands, 27 on a little flare down. Mm -hmm. He was getting the ball out of his hands. The two – like, the things that happened early in the football game, the, 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 the punt return and the big play, like – and they jumped out. I mean, it, that just happened. It was like boom, boom, and we, they was up. You know what I mean? So stick to your game plan. I think they went away from that way too quick, went into panic mode way too quick, showing desperation way too quick. I didn't like that. It, it's, it's one of the things as, as a coach, and it, it's hard, like you're saying, but you fumble the opening kickoff, and then they score. Yeah. You're three and out, you punt it, and they run it back to the 20-yard line. Yeah. And at that point, like you're saying, there's got to be all right, defense. Just listen, do what you did. And they stopped them. They got a field goal. Got them to a field goal. Okay, so walk off the field. You bring your team together. Don't even bring the offense or the defense together. Bring the whole group together for just a second and say, guys, chill out. Let's start over. All right, we've we were 17 nothing against Auburn. We can do this. And there was a point. It was 20 to. It was 20 to seven. Seven. And when that third down and then the fourth down sack happened, if they would have gotten it to twenty to ten at halftime, like, like I said, I think you're you, you feel like you're tied at that point. So it feels like a win. It feels like yeah. you go into well, half yeah. and you're like, all right, we're back with every, that, everything right before, that happened. That's what I'm saying. Right before half, your end of the half management was terrible. You gave them an opportunity to put points back on the field, mm -hmm. on the board, right before halftime. Like, that is all those things I don't think was getting factored in. Dude, the best part about our team, we all know, is our defense. So, you got to think at some point they're going to come back together, house going to get them right. Third, fourth quarter, we're going to be able to stop some drives and hopefully get the offense going a little bit. But let's not not give ourselves a chance by the decisions we make in the first quarter. So early in a football yeah, game. No doubt. Speaking of the defense, um, click over to this. And uh, one of the things, it, it, this is more college game because of where the numbers and things are, but I want you to look at how wide their splits are. And there, that created so many issues in the seam. Yes. Because they were widening them out. Now, yes. this is a little different here, uh, the way this is played. I'll show it to you from, from a different angle. But they, they basically, the number two here ran, it's, when I say number two, this, guy's, this guy ends up running just like a you know, the little inside fade route and just gets run by. And this was the, this was the play that was the play directly after the fourth and one sack. That's exactly right. That's so, when you take a shot, too. That's exactly right. Tennessee knew right then these dudes are reeling. What's that, about 5,000? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a fine. That's a fine. That's a fine. That's a That's a fine. 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 That's a But I thought that the thing that Tennessee, Tennessee did there, and you'd love to see this from any team, I think, that, you're, you're, that you pull for at least – is sorry. This is the next play. I thought that was a, thought that was a replay. Um, one of the things you 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 want to put from your team is to have an attacking. Okay, they're down. You know, it's like it's like anything else. You 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 get in a fight with a dude and he falls down, and you Take see him shot. staggering. You, you're about to roundhouse him the next time or something. Exactly you know what right. I mean? You, you're taking a shot at him. So. And the same way you say that, Coach, is the same way LSU should have anticipated this. Mm -hmm. Should have known off of a turnover, off of this, especially in this situation, in the 50, they're going to try to take a shot. Yep. And it didn't look like we knew that. Now, one of the things about we talked about going into this game was Hooker and the type of, uh, type of player he is and his running abilities. Fabulous. But he's, he wants to play quarterback That's first. That's exactly right. So when squeeze the pocket and anything internally, just don't give him a running lane. And I thought right here, you you look at this. So you got I, I don't know I can't tell if this guy's spying on him or what he's doing here. Like I'm assuming he is. I'm assuming he's spying the quarterback, so he sees him right there. So he says, <laughs> okay, I got to go. 
Harold Perkins could help. You've got to make that play. And because you don't make that play, and then mm-hmm. – go, go, go back for a second, Coach, to the beginning. We talked about earlier with Jaden when the pressure was coming, just stepping. Yep. Watch, watch this. Nice step, stop. That's it. Now, you done got away from two, three. You're in the pocket. You step there. You can still he, let it go if you want to. But yeah, we should got to make this tackle. You still got five. You got five yard space. Still right got there. it to let it go. That's what we talk about. when We talk about playing the position. This this is just on God. So you got to make this tackle. So that's that's one look at that. Now this one here, I thought was a good job because we he's stepping back. You really have Max Pro here because you get yep, the tight end yep. and the and the running back in. And you see how when he this I can't tell who that is, but he got to the point where he's about to go full past back. The, Full back. That's right. And then this guy's coming right around here to fill that in. And I thought this was a good rush. And look what it does. It causes him to throw a bad throw. That's right. Which this you – know, Now, that's what we wanted to do with the Auburn quarterback that we didn't get done. Correct. So, here's the back end look of it right nice. here. Nice. So, he comes up here. And when he sees he's past – he folds back, this guy realizes there's a there's going to be a gap here. So, he, he folds back into this into this gap. And you get two guys hitting him, and it's, it caused a bad throw. Yeah, and throw. and honestly, like I can't, I don't know what that looked like on the other end of it, but I would think this guy might be coming out of here, and maybe he makes the play. Who knows? But again, I, that the rush caused that one. I Absolutely. thought that was good. Um, now you look at now you look at this one. This is a, this is the thing about they're going to motion this guy across, and he's going to go all the way outside. He's going to motion out. Right, right below the citizens bank there, and it causes a bank's open. Yeah, bank <laughs> bank is open bank on this. Bank is one. open, baby. On the ain't line. So this is a this is a, this is a cover. So this is a cover three, and it's an exchange blitz. So they're bringing when I say exchange, they're bringing four. So instead of having this guy in coverage, he's blitzing. Instead of having this guy rushing, he's dropping, and they're spot dropping. And this guy is really because he bumped out over number one. Now he's really the the deep third guy well mm. problem is is you, you run into that big seam area you can't get back right here and the the thing about this play is so if you're playing cover three you got a safety <laughs> corner corner and then you got four guys underneath and if they're spot dropping like they do and these guys are getting deep there are it's like seattle does like that's exactly. what that's what new orleans was doing in seattle i'll show you in a little while there's there's massive holes right there <sighs> And you can either hit curl routes in there, but you can hit the seams. If you throw the seams fast enough, like he's doing right here. Damn. Yeah, hit before 15 yards. And then there's your deep safety. But it's over. Your corner stayed stayed low, yeah. and that's why there's, you know, you don't really have anybody here. So that, that the big the big splits, here, here's a different look at it. My man Orlovsky screwing me up here. Mm. But you can see, I don't, is he supposed to go deep? Because everybody else is spot dropping yeah. here. And then he's running. He's supposed to free. have deep thirds, cause he's so, he's locked in like he's running man coverage. So that 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 was an issue right there. Now, I thought this was this was just good. This was third and two, all right. And I don't know if there's a <laughs> something ain't something ain't right with my man right here with Tennessee, because <laughs> oops, yeah. So. But the fact that <laughs> he did one thinking. But but the the fact he that made a business decision. The <laughs> fact that he this this guy came in here made the play and you know that that was that was an aggressive play call because you could tell right now that, that they ain't got they ain't got nobody deep. You right. know what I mean? No 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 they coming. It's all out and, blitz zero. And here, this is baby. this is on if you notice it's on the eight plus eighteen yard yeah. line going in. So yeah. one of the big things about teams is when when do you zero blitz? You zero blitz in a gotta have a situation. All right. When you know they don't, they're not necessarily had like if it's fourth and one or third and two, and you know they don't need to go for like like into the game, or if they're in a situation, I don't know what their kicker situation was, but sometimes you're like, listen, we we can get these guys, maybe we can knock them back here, and that knocks them out of field goal range or something, yeah. and maybe probably not where they're at right there, but if you're on like the 35 yard line, a lot of times, but that was a good play call. I mean, that was they took a chance there on defense, and uh, the. <laughs> This might be my favorite play of the of the, of the day with the defense because watch where this safety comes mm. from. I mean, I, I can't tell if he's the – I guess he's – yeah, he's a strong safety because the nickel's up here. Yeah. thought it was a nickel at first, but watch where this guy comes from. Not one person, this back especially, even looks at him. Dink. No. And that blows my mind because is is a guy who did yeah. protection for so long. Yeah, Again, it's the exchange blitz. They're dry, it's a four-man rush. 
So you still have seven in coverage, but you're bringing this dude. So it's really the same blitz you saw earlier. It looked like the hunting badge out, mm-hmm. baby. Now watch, now watch the difference. That's the same blitz from earlier, right? Remember this guy stayed low? Yeah, deeper now. Watch him, watch him now. Yeah. Same, same formation, too. Yeah. So he got Opened out of up, there. Opened up, whole oh. different stands, whole different mm-hmm. everything. And then this is one of those things you talk about. People are always talking about, um, like, linemen running to the ball, like in practice. Hey, turn and run to the ball, turn and run to the ball. And everybody's like, man, coach, you just – shut up, coach. You're just trying to wear us out. Maybe. But, you know, because we ain't got nothing else to do, right? Right. So We're out here for three hours but anyway. But also, you, you don't know where that ball is going to go, That's man. That's right. You don't – that ball is oblong. That's right. That ball slide out anywhere. You don't know where that ball is going. So, you, you got to get on – you got to just – that's why you do it. And, and, you know, it's plays like this, man, that I was talking about earlier, coach, that what – why our decision making in the first quarter was just because you got to understand what house and his defense how they've been playing that they're going to bring you back into the game at oh, some yeah. point so don't get yourself out of it early brian kelly and then look at look at the way he he hit this guy he he knows where the ball is he knows where the ball is but he also <laughs> he also this is not he's he's being number one he's being safe but he's, he's also rapping too he's rapping <laughs> And he's got his shoulder on everything. He doesn't, took his head out of it, so you're yeah. not going to get the targeting. You're not right. going to get the roughing. But you you can hit this guy as hard as you want as long as you do it correctly. And that's, that's where – That's form tackle that coach. But, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, and everybody's everybody's trying to protect quarterbacks these days, even worse after Tua. And you saw that stuff last night. Man, mm. Tua, I saw a play – Yeah, did we say – I saw a play yesterday. Who was that? That Tom play was, yeah. it was ridiculous. No, it was the Monday night game. Did y'all see that? Yeah, when he fell down. Yeah, Chris Johnson came in and hit him. He fumbled and got the ball. They get oh, it, that, they got to do something about that. He got called they for roughing the passer with possession of the ball. Yeah. Because they said he, <laughs> he came on down top on top of him with but his he also full body. It. He braced he himself. Braced. Dog, how you tell a lineman yeah. he can't fall on a quarterback and I'm a quarterback? Go, go to the NFL website. That don't website. even make sense. Go to the NFL website and look up roughing the passer and, and full weight. I, I don't know if you it, it used to be on there. But it actually, there was a video talking about if you – brace or if you look like you're trying to brace he they did should, that they should not call it he did that if you just go down you got your hands all what about there, if he oh. strips sacks him and it's a fumble and he has the ball doesn't everything else go out the table he got to hold the ball and fall <laughs> in, the, in the quarterback on defense now <laughs> exactly That's the tackle. Stupidest shit ever, i promise you uh anyway I, so this was like late in the, this was in the third quarter um i don't know what the score was here but so Dad. i just i i to me, when, when, you get, to when you get down here, it just to me, it just doesn't look like – I don't know if they're tired. It may have, and, again, these dudes were going like a mile a minute on offense. But that's what happens. Watch, watch the defensive guys. and They're just leaning on them. It, they're tired because yeah, they're that tempo – It wears you down. That tempo was real. Like – well, and and because it rode to your point that the tempo was real because you kept giving the ball and short like you kept you kept having to do quick changes on defense because of how you played the game offensively so you didn't get to your yeah. a chance for your defense to ever get it catch it a breath so that's what Honestly. I got so uh, you know defensively I think what you you hit it on the head I think the defense was pressing too much for a while because they felt like they needed to make a hundred percent and. But they they still they still did a lot of good things. The defense did a lot of good things. I know it doesn't it sounds funny when guys you know a team drops forty on you or whatever it was, but there's there's a lot of factors that go into that. And Tennessee's a good team. Yeah, real good team, and we'll see what happened with them this week. But to, to my thing with the game earlier, and I'm about to get up out of here. Mm-hmm. But is I just don't like the panic that seemed to set in early with our coaches. And I can understand from a, a defensive standpoint, like to your point, saying, okay, they were fast-paced offense, number one SEC, number two in the country. They're going to go fast, they're going to put a point. But I also think that's to the most point of your offense is to slow that down. Like, you can slow that down with yeah. what they were doing earlier. And I don't, I think the coaches panic, and, they sh- and the kids see that the coaches panic based on the decisions that you made early in the game. The game is gonna come back to you, man. Like yeah. it's going it always comes back to you. It's gonna come back to you. So for you to make them dumbass decisions early in the game that that put us 
even out of a chance to come back later, even if the defense, now you're putting on the defense to get turnover, get turnover, and speedy press. They feel that from you. Yeah. Like, we all talking about energy. We feel energy. We feel the panic within you as a coaching staff. If I'm your quarterback, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm going to press. Don't let them feel that. If we as fans see that and felt that, there's no doubt them players felt that. Yeah, and I think, too, as a, as a player, and I learned this, I learned this from the coaching side of it, is – if you're a calm coach, your players are calmer. If you're a coach that just constantly is yelling and screaming and your other, every other word's F, you know, it's like y'all got to, if you chill for a minute, if you chill for a minute, your guys will chill for a minute. Now there's a point where they may be too chill and you might need to, right, right, ah, right, you know, right, get right, on them right, a little right, bit. Right. But at the same time, like I, I told my running backs all the time, but I will not, I will not yell at you. I'll only yell at you if you're across the field and you ha and I, you can't hear me. That's when I'll yell at you. I said, if you do something wrong, we're going to talk about it. But I'm not going to berate you. I'm not going to go over to you and say something to you really loud and scream it so that just because just I want you to hear it. I, I don't feel like I've got to do that. I want to make sure I correct what you're doing. That's my job. My job is a coach. But I think sometimes it, it does get to the point where it's there's a panic. And I've been around it, too. It's not just I'm not just saying LSU. I'm just saying I think – Coaches in general, because I'd say the majority of coaches have played the game before. Not everybody at the highest level or anything, but, you know, and they still think they're playing the game. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm being as real. And, nah, you're right. It happens with the youth coaches too. And, and <laughs> right. I think we, if, as long as a, as a coach, if you can step back and say, my job is not to be a player. My job is to help the player be the best he can be on the field. And if, and if that player is going crazy a little bit, calm him down. Right. You know, and I mean, I was like, I, like I said, I've, I've, I had Adrian Peterson in my last year in Detroit. And uh, I remember one time he got he got all upset during a game. And I just looked at him and I said, well, the yelling ain't doing no good. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, coach, you're right. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a 35 year old Adrian Peterson, you know, I mean, I'm like. Yeah, I mean, he was just upset. I mean, I, yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. The, it the situation, I've it been upset it's too. It's football. It's but, football. That's why I don't agree with this falling on the quarterback thing. It's football. Yeah. Put a flag on him, right? That's Dude, what I said. Come on, man. Put, put, a, put, a, put an orange jersey on him and say you can't touch him. Give him one of those weird bumblebee helmets. Dang, get Make him. him. Like, like who, I forgot who said it last night. It might have been, uh, what's that boy name? quarterback for the Cowboys, Aikman. Aikman might have said it. Put a skirt on him then. Just put a skirt on him. If you ain't want to play football, put a skirt on him. And I think most quarterbacks, to be honest with you, I think most quarterbacks are saying are saying the same thing we're saying. It's like, let, let us play. play. Let yeah. us play. I don't think it's the quarterbacks Man, making kickers. this. Yeah. <laughs> kickers. Don't get, you don't get yeah, started on kickers. Yeah, you're well paid to be a kicker now. Yeah, but so. we ain't kickers. Man. Well, man, man, but kickers. don't you think that – was that OSU's intent in going into the game to go for it on fourth down? Were they going to be hyper-aggressive or did they – were they dictated by what happened in the game? I don't understand um, how you could go in the game and say, I'm just going to go for it. I, th I think it was I think a situation. it's how the games go. Yeah. And I, yeah, but it still wasn't right. If, if the ball would have been on the, the minus 35, if they would have been further back, I think it might have been a little different. But Well, that – I mean – I'm not even talking about that one. That one didn't even bother me. It's the it's the one at half when you're it's fourth and ten. No. You got 35 seconds left. That's what I'm. That's, that's what he's yeah. talking about. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, about. yeah. I think yeah. I think if they if they would have gotten bumped back even further, but I just think it was one of those things where it was okay. Let's give it a shot. But give you know, it a the, shot. Here, here's the thing: it's the the third and the third and one. Um, you know, the, if if you the first one, the second the, one, the, that was the, the second time the, they went the for one it, we right? the one we watched yeah, with yeah. the the pass play could have been crossers, but. If if you get that, say say you, say he just rushes and, and gets the first down, you know I think that's what they they were saying. If you saw Brian Kelly after that one, I couldn't tell if he was saying like he was holding his fingers up like there was one on one, it was one on one, you know let it go or whatever. I think that's what he was getting at, or run it or get get rid. You know that was a very bad play. It, it, but it was just it, it was that one was of those a things very where, very bad play design. It was almost they were saying run around and make a play. Yeah, and no. And so they they had it they had it planned they were going on it on fourth down yeah so well brother I know you need to get going yeah so appreciate you coming in absolutely and man. Uh, I'll be back you know get, uh, <laughs> let me get my uh, be I, back I, next week see what they do against Florida I put Lloyd on I put Lloyd on IR last week so maybe he can move you, um, yeah I'll slide you, in coach you, you can move slide in I'll slide in emergency quarterback All tap right. him in <laughs> we can go to break real quick and we'll throw it back yeah that's crazy alright we'll take a break <laughs> dual threat. <laughs> Salt and pepper.
Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart and 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. We've seen the BK takeover stuff <laughs> from from LSU and, and social media, and um, really in his short time in Baton Rouge, there's been a lot of people embracing his his approach to, to building this roster. What's it like to recruit alongside him? Oh, it's been it's been great. Coach has been awesome to me. Yeah, it's it's like sad. You know, it shows you the facts. Myself, when it comes watching recruiting, when it yeah. comes to Rope. coaching. He lets his coaches uh, coach, lets his coaches that. recruit, I two, so I have no complaints like, on that on that end. I, when I, I need him to come to touch me, like kid, he's there like for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that way, so line was it on the has been great. that he's seam shot? It was on the it was on the crosser, and it was on the uh, it was on the first two plays. It was the it was the one. It oh, okay, Sean. It was the third down protection where he yeah. should have taken it deep, and it was the third down and one where they, uh, it was those two. Yeah. That's how I got the, the. I was like, you can't. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to. To. Uh, oh, we kick back off. Let's see. Oh, I left the mic. Sorry, guys. Yeah, show within the show. That was on me. <laughs> Man, we got uh, up to eat M and M's, and he's like, "My I bad." To, I went to the bathroom. Got some M and M's. So listen, y'all saw behind the scenes of how we're honest people around here. Yeah. Okay, we're honest people on Caskey's Clicker. Um, Nothing we wouldn't say on the show. Again, I'll reiterate too. Oh. I'll reiterate. My job is not to bash on coaches. I'll reiterate that. That's not my job. I, I I'm friends with a lot of coaches, and we, when we watch the film, man, it's all about watching the film, and uh, you know. Uh, Tape don't lie. Yeah, so uh, moving into Saints, um, you know, that was a crazy game, obviously. Um, you know, Seahawks just came off a game in Detroit that they scored, what, 45 or something, 48, I think. And, you know, they to come in here, you know, Geno Smith's just playing out of his mind. So, Have you ever seen anything like that where Geno – I felt like we knew who Geno Smith was. Like going, you know, I didn't think that he could change his stripes to this, or is he just hot right the now? The broadcaster was talking about somebody that he played with that was like, that was like Geno Smith, like a similar situation where he was a backup for a long time and then he became a starter and he was playing lights out. But I forget who the guy was, but yeah, um, he was, I don't know, I, I don't even know who the announcer was, but he was saying that. That's Geno the only Smith other time a, he's seen it? Yeah, Geno Smith was in a similar situation. But well, it is crazy that he's playing at the level that he is. It's unbelievable. I mean, He's, ma he's making plays. I think that's he's making just, money. He's, he's just he's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. yeah. And so going into this, uh, when you look at a couple of their plays here, and again, this is the Citizens Bank Telestrator. The, we don't I don't have the logo up there, but this is the Citizens Bank Telestrator. Uh, this first one. So we talk about on on the Saints defense versus the Seahawks, and uh, I want you to watch the. I believe it's up here on. I believe it's Cam Jordan. We're talking about how techniques of offensive linemen at the NFL level, we were talking about how the LSU linemen were turning a little bit. Well, there's a thing when, when offensive linemen, you'll see this from the end zone, when offensive linemen reach, and when I say they're reaching, they're almost lunging. So if you watch how 72 is here, I'll pause it when it gets to the, to the point. Now I think Cam, I mean, obviously, you see how he reached that. Mm. He reached that one, that one hand out, and that, that's a tough – that, that you can reach that hand out, but you got to have your feet on the ground. And he just see how he gets turned and turned and turned. And Geno Smith's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. He's he's sitting. He's got his back foot in the ground, and he's getting ready to throw the ball. But when you get turned like that, and you reach, 
it, you, you just don't have a chance. And then, so I think the Saints are doing a good job of their pass rushes and how they're, how they're rushing. Now, this is a pretty cool deal. Um, you guys have, you guys heard of, uh, you know, Spider 2 Y Banana. Absolutely. Spider 2 Y Banana. This is Spider 2 Crisscross. Kind of the same concept of, spider two y of, banana. Um, of what, Love what, a man. what they were doing. So, what they're going to do is, is he's actually going to come across, go the flat. He's supposed to come off and cut, cut the edge. So, now, see my man, see him. Look, he, he's, he's thinking about it. He's like, he's supposed, he's supposed to fly up there and take the outside leg of that guy. And he and didn't cut want to him cut down. him. And so that's what causes Geno Smith a little bit, you know, of, of hesitation there. So as, as a back, when you're taught this spider two protection, you got to look at how wide the guy is. Now you've cut, you're cutting the first thing outside of the tackle. Well, the first thing outside of the tackle is Cam Jordan and he's outside the tight end. So right now these guys are going to, push down like this nine should be on on a b line for that outside leg geno smith's really going to kind of half roll over here and geno has to trust that he's doing this right he's got to trust that he's design. doing it. so he's gonna he's he's really that's why he's not worried about half rolling over here but then at that point it's, it's just cooked. it's done and then if you go back and look at at the play remember i told you th these plays are really good against against man coverage mm -hmm. Well, you got to get off on the man coverage. You see, you see how they're see how long it took him to get off down here, and that they that's what the I think the Saints were doing a good job of. There was one play where they're just like vice vicing Metcalf to not let him off the line, and that's allowing that's what happens when you do that kind Especially of. Especially when you have a pass rush with the Saints, that are, or how they're able to get pressure on the quarterback. If you can give yeah. make Juno take one, two, half more steps, that's when Cam Jordan get your face. Especially if you don't cut him. Now, I, this is just me talking football here, okay? This really has nothing to do with the Saints' defense. I just thought this was one of the best wide zones I've seen this year. And we talk about stretching the ball and then one cut and go, all right? Yeah. Now, when he comes here, he's going to cut, but then he's going to end up winding it back. But, that crease. But the point of this play is, if you see it from the end zone, yes, it's a big play. On these, on these wide zones, these guys are really just trying to stretch these guys as far as they can, all right, as they work up to the next level. And they're tr he's trying to run to get them to run over the top and then make that cut right there. So it, we, we told him it was, you know, usually a five-step course for the back. And then once, once you hit your third step, you should know what you're doing. Once you hit your fifth step, you should go one, two, three, four, five, boom. And he goes up, he goes up the field. Now, look at all the blocking those guys were blocking downfield. That's what makes a difference is these receivers. And then this kid, like, this kid's a good player. A rookie. So, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's, he's – Kenneth Walker. Be. Michigan State wishes they still had him. But, yeah. but that's uh, – if you're Seattle, if you go to the play before, whenever, that's who they leave with on Cam Jordan. You yeah. have a rookie in against a potential Hall yeah. of Famer. I mean, you're not really setting yourself up to succeed But he's also supposed point. to be cutting his outside line, yeah. too. It's, it's not well, like Penny he, got hurt, so I understand why he's in. But that's just a tough task for somebody that hadn't yeah. been in the moment before. So keep an eye on, on this formation that they're doing here. This a full we, house? We used to call it, yeah, it was full. We actually called it full. So this would be like full left or whatever, you know. So here in a minute, they're going to go ahead and shift these guys up. It ends up being a three-by-one formation. So they, they're doing a lot of good stuff with this full, uh, this full backfield. But I want you to watch the corner here. All right, he's going to come back in here on this play, and he loses contain. See how he, mm. ran, he ran in with his guy, and all of a sudden here he comes. That corner is supposed to force this thing back in there. And another big play. See it from the back end. This all they're doing is this these are these are simple, simple plays that they're running. All they're doing is they're running just like an inside zone. It's almost a draw. It's it's it really it ends up being so these two really are doubling to him. He's got him, he's got him, he's got him, and they're just leading in on the other two guys. And you know, the kid makes a good good play. I don't know. And you talk about him losing outside contain as a corner. And you, what do you say all the time? They're, the best way you can pass. I mean, the best way you can run block is by essentially running a right. route. That's well, kind of what he got him. Kind of what he did. He yeah. Ran, he ran him in there, and, and then he didn't have enough time. So here's a play later. You see, they started in that full backfield, and then they motioned up. And I showed this play yesterday morning. Watch what happens when they when they shift this entire play. When they shift this play, watch all the shifting going on on this side of the ball. Mm. There's a lot of lot of different talking that's got to go on. Now, 
they did run out of this play, so they're about to fake a, a, a wide zone here. So these guys block down. If, it, if it's a run, they obviously block down too. So watch what happens to 55. He's, he, this guy blocks down or fakes the block down. He's really releasing. And then 55 <clears throat> just gets lost, and he just can't catch up. And then he gets picked off there, and that's how these things – Happen. That's how those big plays happen. But you create it by the shifts and the motions and – Controlled chaos a little bit. Correct. Because everybody knows what's going on on the offensive side of the ball. Now the defense is going, okay, well, we had our strength this way to start, but now our strength's this way, so we got to flip it around. And you can see with the wing set, a lot of teams with wing sets, they're going to take this linebacker and put him on the ball, which – I'm sure Seattle knew that, mm -hmm. which makes it harder for man coverage from that position. And that's that's how those Ooh. that's how that play was developed. Um, it's crazy how small the windows are still are in the NFL, even with how uh, you can scheme them up to get open like that, and he still has to throw an absolute dime. So they're playing they're playing kind of a version of of man coverage, right? I, I think they're they're they may be over here, kind of doubling up. I think here, but watch Metcalf. Keep an eye on Metcalf. Yeah, it's just man. So he, so he, when he comes in, he passes him off to him. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. there, there's a there's a pass off in there. So he gets passed off, and then watch what happens when Geno Smith starts scrambling. He just takes off. So we talked about the scramble drill. If you're low, work high. If you're high, work back. Type of thing. And True. you see how he just threw that threw that hand up just just a touch. Just, it was just like. It wasn't like he was yelling for the ball, but it was like, I got it, I got it. And that's, and that's him, like, not saying I'm open. It's saying I'm keeping it's going down field. Saying, yeah, he's telling him I'm going. Yeah. Like, he's telling him I'm going. So that, that, that all that was was a scramble drill. And watch Geno Smith here. Everybody talks about all the stuff he's doing good. Watch the calm demeanor of, of him the whole time. So he's just like, okay, okay, all right, got it, got it. What a throw. So – Thought that you know that that was one thing. Now, right here, the, this is a cra this is crazy to me. So they're running. They're going to end up running Tampa two, all right. And it's a it's a it's a max drop Tampa two. Has Tampa two come back in the league a little bit this year? It feels like yeah. I'm hearing a ton about it again. So this Tampa dropper here, he's he's initially first looking for anything kind of coming in this area. But once there's nothing, he, he's really playing that middle third. You know, that's why these guys are playing. You see how wide they're playing? Mm -hmm. So that's, it's almost like a de facto cover three a little bit. It, it, work, it works in that direction. So like right here, now you see he's like, well, I need to get back. Well, watch what they're doing. He, they end up running him right here. And that right there, that's not even the, that's not even the best throw he made all day. That, that's a great throw. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. If you watch this throw – I don't know how you – from 50 yards out. Put it on a penny. I mean, that, that's an amazing throw. So that, that's, that's one throw by him. Um, now, they, they started – the Saints have this, this coverage right here, and it's called, it's, it's called mini, all right? So when I call it mini, they're saying – there's Metcalf up here, all right? There's Lattimore. What they're saying is we're one-on-one we're -on -one in him, and he doesn't exist. He doesn't exist. We're playing 10-on-10. 10 10. That's why it's called mini, M-I-N-I. So they're playing a mini cover six, so quarter, quarter, half. All right, so that's what's happening. So he's man-to-man -man up top. And this is just what happens when you play man-to-man -man sometimes. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, they got the Bengals this week. I'd be, I would be shocked if you see as much man as you've been seeing. And he just fell down, and that's how he got so, that's how he got so wide open. People are like, well, somebody voided his zone. Well, all their zones are over here. You know, all the zones are over here. You got to, you got, they, they play it a little differently. Don't get me wrong, but you know, you, you got, you got zones over here and he's man to man over here. That's what this coverage is. So that's what happened when that, and it's just, he just fell down. Yeah. And you're, and you're working against DK and, Metcalf. If you've ever seen the guy, it's yeah. not somebody you really want to get in them in a fist fight with. And then my last one on the Saints defense is this is just a dumb throw. I mean, like, and I say dumb in a good way. Yeah. Just, Stupid, crazy. I want you to. I want you. I'm gonna pause this when the ball gets there. Do you see how many? Look how many people. <laughs> the James uh, throw. Watch stupid. this from the end zone. I, you talk about just taking a taking a chance and throwing a bomb up there. I mean, this dude just said, "You know what? 
I'm hot today. We're going to, we're going to run this play action and I'm taking this shot right here, right here. I don't, you can see he's, I'm, yeah. I don't know if he changed the play or if he's, if he's, if he's just canning the play. So they, if they had two plays called and they may have just had two plays. Kill, called. kill. Yeah. Whew. I mean, there's the ball right there. If you, if you were, if, if you went on Caesar sports book right now and said, did you completion or not? I bet you that has plus 1,000 for a touchdown. Right for yeah. a touchdown. <laughs> and that's amazing to me. So Lockett's done it for so long again, in that spot, too. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click over here, Stewie. So I'm going into the Saints offense. So the way I did this this week, and uh, just wanted to have a little fun with this a little bit. But so I, the Saints offense, the first part of this, the first eight plays, I'm not even really talking about Taysom Hill. All right, the, I've got a I did a wildcat study on other teams and things that I've seen over the years and compared it to how New Orleans is using him. And so I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But for the Saints offense, what was the biggest addition to the Saints offense this week? Navin Kamara coming back. Number 41, right? Yeah. All right. So great to have this guy back because this guy makes a difference. And it's not just I mean, it's just, look how easy this is. So this. All this is is they're just running – they're running what, what we call like duo extra, all right? And this is a really, really cool play. That might be my first all right. No, right. Anyway. All right. Oh, hey, I'll take over the range, Coach. So, right. so you see this receiver comes in. I think this is a pretty cool deal. So instead of bringing this guy across over here and to block this guy and bringing his guy over or these guys bumping over, you know, bringing more people to the party, they leave him over here. They're going to run the same, basically the same play where they're doubling everybody right here. And then he's he's downhill. And they're going to bring this guy back around over from that side. It's a pretty cool play. We, we ran quite a bit of this uh, when I was in Detroit. And it allows you to still get your hat on a hat, your receiver on the safety without bringing him over there. Because look, it leaves this guy on the backside. The guy that came in, mm -hmm. it leaves him on the backside, and he's not even in the in the initial count. So it's a really good play design by by the Saints to do that, and then just the patience, and then just feel the feel that kid has. Of, I'm you can't about you can't coach any of that, right? Like it doesn't feel like you can coach what Kamara does. Just no, it's, it's a little bit levy on Bellish. We're like, I mean, just you can kind of play your game. You can you can for sure screw it up as a coach. Oh yeah, you can for sure screw it up. Uh, I, so I, if you coached him, you you just we're just going through the drills. We're not like. No, I I think you I think you still push him and and tell him the reads and tell him this, but I think there's a there, there's a pace to certain guys that you don't want to take away. And uh, when I when I was co like when I was coaching Joe Mixon versus Gio Bernard, I they ran differently, so right. I, I knew that, and I wasn't going to try to push Gio to run the same way that I coached Joe to run, you know, or. Even even Joe to Jeremy Hill when I had him and it, there's there's guys so Joe and Joe Mixon and Kamara came out the same year, and I went to both of their pro days and Kamara just looked like a different dude. I didn't know how to really evaluate build, him, build him. Is he? He's not just a running back. This dude's what he what you see. Like this, you use this guy everywhere. I think Joe could have done some same stuff. We look we were looking for a running back, running back, and you know with Kamara, I think it was one of those things where it was like. You know, do we? Uh, how do we use this guy? And I, there's, and it's not a bad thing, but you got to use him. You know, and unlike Tennessee, yeah. Well, that's that was well, that was a big knock on him. At least in our building was, well, I mean, he plays in an SEC team and he's a rotator. He rotates. Well, he, I mean, I'm like, that's not on him. That's that's not on him. Don't blame him for that. So anyway, uh, we were talking about earlier about the cover three. So this, we talked about this one yesterday, and we talked about spot drops. And Seattle's big in the spot dropping. So what that means is these guys have the hook curl, um, curl flat, hook curl, hook curl, curl flat, deep third, deep third, deep third. So they're they're going to spots and they take whatever comes in their zone. Well, that opens up these seams. And that's if you watch anybody play a Seattle style defense. So, you know, when you even went back to um, who was it? Uh, uh, Dan Quinn at, at Atlanta. When Dan Quinn was at Atlanta, mm -hmm. they, he ran that same defense. I couldn't think of his name there for a second. Because um, he was the defensive coordinator at Seattle. Then yes. the Falcons started to be the head coach, and he brought that defense. And now he is in – I think he's in 
Dallas. He's in Dallas. Where he's still, I mean, he's revered as one of the better defensive coordinators in the league, but is he still doing the same style? I th- I'd, I'd have to go back and look. I, okay. think, I think so. I think it's some of it. But if you look right here, they see they run this guy to the flat. So this guy's got the flat, so he's got to like leave. He's playing that deep third, so they're running a curl route. And so this, so he runs up, gets him to run back. He gets him to run out, and then he sits here. And the back sits under here to pull him down. And it opens up that window right there for him to throw in. So from the end zone, you can see that there's mm. a there's a good good clean window. Oh, just my little clicker went my clicker went crazy there. Caskey's clicker. Caskey clicker said, uh uh-uh, oh, I guess I don't oh I don't have the end zone of that one. Sorry. Um, so again, same look, same look. All right, but same pass. You know they're running that curl with the flats. And there's, they're, they're right there, and they end up hitting it again. Now I want you to watch Kamara from the end zone of this play. This is, uh, this is impre- I, I, he It's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but he runs him past. He gets just enough, and, and Kamara's not a pass-protecting back. I just be straight with it. You know, he's just he is what he is, but he gets just enough of him, and then he knows at this point I need to run him by, and Andy just slither up, steps up, makes his play, and. There's things Kamara does, I think, that, that brings him in there. Um, we talk about Dalton and, and what he does. I think they'd have a good flow with Dalton and, and Taysom Hill because Dalton brings a little sense of calm, I think, to the team um, while Jameis is out. And then right now, if you look at this, so he steps back. Everything's covered. All right? they're, they're running these crossing-type routes. Well, they're, they're playing zone, so you know you could probably, he might be able to hit that, but he's about to get hit. You know, but he he finds a way to get the ball to Out of just, his hands just and keep it to moving the, to the check down. And people talk about Kamara and all the and all the um, and all the uh, passing yardage he's had over the years. Well, a lot of that is checkdowns, and you see that's just checking a ball down, and and you're getting you're getting yardage. And I think Andy does a good job of that. So, just wanted to make a point of of that of of him being able to do that. Looking at this. Um, Double A pressure, all right. Not sure what necessarily the rules are on this, but I'm assuming that they're just going normal slide pro. Kamara's got the backer, but this is what I'm talking about about Kamara. This is what he doesn't necessarily bring to the table. So he's going to step up. He's blocking him. These guys are all blocking the, these guys. So what's going to happen is he ends up getting – and he motions him up a little bit too, doesn't he? Yeah. So, he brings Kamara up. He's so, like, "You're in this. You're in this gap." So why do people do that? To, and that to shorten the distance between the that's, the running back and the linebacker, because you know if he's coming, that's who you got. It's one reason, but you can block him from back here too, right? You could. So you blew, you move him up here because a lot of these teams are doing this. They're running him through okay. and then picking him around. Well, the problem is if you're back here, sometimes if you get up here, you're off level. So that center sets back and say his feet are here well by the time you get from here up your feet are here and this guy gets through that gap right there so what people move this guy here so that he can get up here and he can get on the same level as that center and they can pass it off right there with that that's the reason people move up so um usually it's versus like right there that really Mm. should be a that pick with the same thing. So now he's now he's going this way, and they're doing this. So he should be able to get up here, get with that guard, pass him off to the guard. The guard should pass his guy off, and yeah, the back's gonna end up on big boy. But you become a speed bump at that point, right? You're just trying to do your best. And Andy just didn't have a, a shot there. Um, now th- I think this is a major, major bust by the Saints. I don't know how this happened. Um, this is not. This is not good. So. This looks to me like, it, it, you know, it's like quick game. So you, when I say quick game, you can see they're running stick routes a little out. He runs here. Point being, what they do is usually when you get that double A front right there, instead of putting the back inside on the backer, if they know he's getting rid of the ball quickly, you'll full slide, and then he'll come off the edge and cut the guy off the edge. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think there's a, there's a pass pro bust here by somebody because they did not block the – they didn't block – the edge guy here and this is how honestly this is how you can lose a quarterback you, you lose a quarterback pretty quickly if, if you if if you get the wrong kind of hit obviously and that's the blind side too so 
you know, there, there was something wrong here with the way that they, they communicated this. See, mm. even he's setting out, he's setting in, then he's got to get so out. Really like between somewhere between these three guys, I don't know who's wrong. I would assume the way Kamara's going in, because it looked like he just asked Andy what was going on, that he's right and that he should be out on 53. But and you could tell Andy thought it was blocked. Right. Andy's I've been around Andy for a long time. Andy's not a guy that just takes a hit. You know, so he he knows. Um, I thought Andy kind of held the ball here. You know, and and then really the O line's getting beat. You got a two man combination. Kind of looks like the one they had. You know, the LSU combination mm -hmm. here. So that they're both breaking out. So I'm not real sure what they're trying to get here. But if you see here, Andy's holding the ball. You don't really get a the back gets out late. The O line's getting beat. So we're talking about sacks on these guys and. This is really a, it's a it's a it's a max pro shot play. So you know that play they ran earlier where I drew up they were all double teaming. Mm -hmm. It's the same it's the same thought process, and then he's faking down in there and he the back has this guy. So the back has any any guy that wouldn't have been blocked in the so they're running the same exact run action as you saw earlier without that without the receiver coming in in the block coming across so, yeah. But right here, you could just tell it's just taking too long. And these plays, those kind of plays, when you're blocking, when you're doing a run action, a hard run action, those linemen aren't really um, dropping back, you know, aren't pass setting. They're, they're really coming off the ball like it's run. Um, all right, the last one I got on, uh, on just the regular offense here was this touchdown throw to Olave. I thought this was a, an amazing throw and catch. Obviously, the kid just got he, – he's coming here. Kid just got blasted on the way down. But everybody talks about mm. catch, no catch. Um, what is a catch, no catch? And it, it's, it's hard to tell from this angle, but he's got the ball here. So he's got both feet down. When he goes to turn, just barely turn, he, 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 the ball gets – and he's got that other foot down. And then at this point, he's still got the ball. It's when his it's when his head crashes into the turf right here. Now it's the when he gets concussed. Yes. No. He's like knocked out. Right. Like he's done. Like he's out. He's sleeping. So yeah, he's not going to be holding on to the ball. But what they said was, he had done enough to secure the catch and make a football move that it was a catch. And since he's in the end zone, when it's the end of the play, it's done. The play's yeah. over. There is no, you know, fumbling. Now the whole thing is, you know, the ground can cause an, an incompletion, but it can't cause a fumble. But he completed the catch. So when you complete the catch, the play is done. That's how they. That's how it came about. So, if, but like, and if that doesn't happen in the end zone, if that doesn't happen in the end zone. That's, that's a live ball. That's, that's a fumble. Yeah, that's a fumble if it doesn't happen in the end zone. So, all right, kick me off for a second here. I'm gonna. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Good lord. Uh, good, <laughs> Sad good, image at the good, end. Good catch, brother. But, yeah. Um, at what cost? All right, I got it up. He's dead. Yeah, I mean, he ain't <laughs> playing this week. Yeah. So I did a I did a study on uh, on, hit the salt. on some wildcat stuff here, and, and I'm not going to just go through these plays, in, you know, in deep detail. But I just kind of want to give an idea of why the 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 Taysom Hill thing is working so well. All right, so we've got this was when I was with with Cincinnati. So this is like 2012. There's Andy Dalton down there, so a little familiar face for y'all. AJ Green can't get away from the right? guy. So yeah. what we what we said here Red was all right. Goes. We got a tight end up here. We got Red Rifle. We got two backs in the backfield, and we're running. It was an, it was a quick little play action deal, but Mo's going to fake here, and he's going to drop back and throw. We had AJ run the post, but the biggest thing was we we needed the safety to come down because what happens is most teams will play a cover zero versus Wildcat because they don't think you can throw. Well, Muhammad Sanu is a rookie at this point. I don't think he had thrown a pass in the NFL. He had thrown some at Rutgers, mm -hmm. and this was like first of like eight straight a straight completions like throughout his career of, and like four touchdowns. But you see how this, that, that, that safety QB1. came down. So we knew right now, okay, we're running it. All right. We had a play called if the guy stayed back, we were going to audible out of it and run the ball. So we had a way out of the play, but you can see here, he didn't drop back and drop a 73 yard dime to AJ <laughs> green. And uh, that was first play of the game, by the way. Wow. First play. Seven of the game. nothing. Seven, First play of the dime. game, and and you talk about on the road, that, taking the air out of a building. So so we knew right now that we had we had one on one here, and we knew that they were just they they were all in 
straight up protection. 41 is cooked. He, there's nothing he can do about it once he walks and up like that, right? Think, yeah. So we, we knew we knew that they had done that in the past. Um, all right, so here's a look at the Colts and what they've been doing. So now, has Jonathan Taylor thrown thrown a ball? I don't know. And this is uh, this isn't this is uh, what's his name? Um, I believe this is Hines. But either way, if they, have they thrown a ball? I don't know. But the biggest thing you need to pay attention to this is who's who else is on the field. There's Matt Ryan. He's a threat. Okay. <laughs> Derek Stingley well, Jr. is covering so, him. But don't, so here's the thing. Number one, it does take a guy out. Yeah. It does take a guy out. But what you can say is just put somebody on him so they don't throw it over there. You don't have to put Stingley on him. Put freaking D. Lyman on him or right. something. But point being, look, look at everybody. Everybody else is basically walking up into a zero look. And they're saying, you're not running the ball here. And and it just causes it just causes issues when, when, you, when you know you don't have a – when you know you don't have literally a no threat to throw it, you don't have a threat to throw it, and one of your receivers is the quarterback. quarterback. All right, so here's the Giants, and obviously Saquon Barkley's having a, a good good year with some of this stuff. But if you look here, that's Daniel Jones up there, I believe, and he's hurt. So what they did, they brought out. Now look, everybody else starts walking down, just like that safety did mm-hmm. for uh, for Washington. So right now they're saying, you know what, you're not. You're not gonna run the ball on us, and right here, that's that's a tough you're, you're, that's tough sledding when you're trying to run when you're trying to run into basically, you know, everybody up here is just saw blitzing, and these guys will these guys have these three, and you know, it's just it's just tough sledding. Well, so then, yeah, I mean, they know what you're doing. I got two. When you more. eliminate half of what football is, it kind of makes it a little bit easier on the defense, I'd imagine. So I got two more. So there's this is the first game of year. So that's still Dak up here, all right. And this is uh, this is Pollard and Zeke in the backfield. So I, Pollard, I'm sure can throw the ball. I, I, I'm pretty sure he did at Memphis actually in college. But right now Tampa's saying, you know what? Screw it. We're bringing all our guys down. We're just going to play zero across the board and stop the run. So I'm, I'm the point I'm making is when I get to Taysom Hill here in a minute, you'll see this is the last one that's not the Saints. So again, go to the Giants. All right, they're playing Carolina here. Again, quarterbacks on the field. Again, they're just playing cover zero. They got too many guys up in the box. So you right. really have one extra guy in the box. Now the difference between all this that they're doing and what the Saints are doing, all right, I've got two, the first two clips are the Saints having a quarterback on the field. All right, so when we, when we look at this, so Taysom Hill, when I say they got a quarterback on the field, I'm talking about somebody other than Taysom. So there's Andy Dalton at the bottom down here. Good receiver stance for Andy. He's Andy, done it a lot. Dude, dude Andy, Andy's, Andy's done this a lot, I'm telling you. He knows <laughs> how to do it. So Taysom Hill's in here. Now, here's the, here's the problem. Taysom Hill's also a quarterback. So you have – yeah, you have Andy down here. That's fine. So just take him out. And then if you look, it almost looks like – remember that mini coverage I was talking about mm-hmm. earlier? It almost looks like they said, screw this. We're playing that mini coverage. And – Really, he's kind of keeping an eye on him, but all this is saying is now you've got a running box right here because he is a thrower. Now that's a bad block right there, but you, I would. you got you got a chance. You got you you have a chance now because he is a thrower. And there's right there. There's if you I mean you can count him. It's really a five man box, and you should have numbers right. So you go to the next play, and again, the quarterback's on the field here. There's, there's Andy down here. Again, same play. Now the problem is, is you kind of have a free runner with 56 because nobody's worried about Andy down here. You, nobody's got to worry about him. So you, you don't, you could kind of keep guys in position. So if you go to these next few plays, if now, now, and now there's no quarterback other than Taysom Hill on the field. All right, now what do you do? Do you play pass? Do you play run? I, I mean, obviously they probably play run for the first few plays. Especially when they come out in such a heavy formation. But if you look here, you've got now, – now you actually have – you're playing 11-on-11 11 11 football. Because usually if the quarterback hands the ball off, he's out. Now you gained him. Now the quarterback you, – you have to literally account for him with your 11th guy. So you, you can have 10 guys blocking for him. And allow it now that that's not a great play, but it's not bad. But again, you're talking about running power and then adding an extra guy. So they're 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 not only running power, 
how they're blocking it, pulling this guy. They're getting this guy ahead of him too. So you're getting you're getting extra guys out in the out in the blocking scheme, and it really it allow. Here's the same play, same play again. You you have to account for them all, and you can see it's just that that extra having that extra guy. Mm -hmm. Watch 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 this guy here. Just having that extra guy in there, you can now kick him out. You can now pull him around. God, and it makes the run game so much easier. And then these are kind of these are kind of fun plays because now you can get now you got you don't have you don't have no quarterback on the field. Now you got Kamara in here. Now you got your your spread set, your eleven personnel set. So you got you got three wides on the field. So now you now you really got to think pass. They, but they run this. We call this bash. I don't know. This was a, a Urban Meyer Ohio State thing. Um, that's kind of this, that's what this play ends up being. And really, there he's. You can see he's reading this guy. If this guy, you know, were were to play really hard up the field, he would end up pulling it and go in there. But he handed it off. Kamara gets the Kamara gets the first down. So you see those things. And then here's a look here. Now they're in total empty. Now what do you do? Do you, you got you got guys you got to go cover, right? Now you really got to spread it out, but he can still throw the ball. So you you're gaining you don't get that extra guy. That Ooh. safety that should be sitting down in here like you saw earlier, that can't sit down. Has in to there. respect it just a little bit. Just a little bit has to respect it, and that's what's opening up. That's what's the difference between what the Saints are doing and what everybody else is doing because it allows it allows you to have these you can spread them out like this and have these type of boxes. And here's here's another look here. I actually like this place pretty cool. They're going to um they're going to end up going outside a lead, they're going to lead block up here. So it's a lead it's a lead draw. But again, you 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 can't mm. you, you got to keep this guy in the field and they're bringing this guy back out. It pulls guys out of the box. You you got you can't just and you just lead block him and it's he's just in. A and it's it's a it's they're doing they're doing absolutely nothing that you've never seen before. You see that kind of like orbit motion that yeah. they do? Yeah. Like, why why don't we ever see that from LSU? Like we do a little the, bit with Kayshawn. But like not this not the orbit behind the quarterback. I don't know, it just maybe some teams haven't put it. I mean honestly it's just uh, but some teams just have never put it in. You see that a lot in football. It, it does it depends on some of the situations are because, like, right here you see when he runs back out, watch 56. Watch, watch, watch 56. 56 has to stay. 57, mm -hmm. too? They just took a step over, and next thing you know, it's boom, boom. You got this guy leading. And that's, that's the biggest thing about this. If this was Andy Dalton standing here and that was Kamara or whoever, uh, then he's handing it here. You don't have the lead blocker on 26. That's, where you're, that's what you're gaining from this. And people are going to say, well, why don't you play Taysom Hill all the time? Well, then it just becomes football at that point, and you know, then then you, at, at some point, it loses it. It loses its flavor at some point. Yeah, and there is something to that. I get it, but uh, this was a quarterback power. Golly. And again, you're talking about you. It's eleven on eleven football, all right? It's eleven on eleven football, and then so Kamara's going to leave out of here. Well, you obviously better go cover him. You see this guy leaving. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to let Kamara just run out. So you just blocked 57 by Without motioning by motioning Alvin Kamara out. Now now you you're really you're really running on DBs at this point. And you can see how that works, but that's exactly why they're doing these things cuz now instead of handing him him handing it off, you now he's your he's your running back. He's he's decoy. He's de facto Andy. And and, and the crazy thing is it's like you're running the same play. These linemen are running power. They're they're not running a play that they don't know. Yeah, it's just different window dressing. All you're doing for these guys, all you're doing tell, is telling these guys you're you're running power. That's all it is. You're running. You're straight up running power, and they it, none of this changes for the offensive line. That's the that's the cool thing about it. Here's here's a, the, I got two more plays here. So here's here's a look at how they're running. This is a so they ran power. Now they're going to run like a version of a counter. So now they got a tight end back here. I don't even think there's a running back on the field. So you got a no lineman at tight end, another tight end. You got a no lineman at tight end, tight end. So if you see here, these two guys, those are extra O linemen. So they've actually got like, like big goal line in almost right. here, and no running back on the field. 
and then you're going to run a counter play. So you got everybody down blocking here. You got the guard pulling and kicking. This guy coming back around, and all he's doing is just waiting. And that's how that's how you break through. And then the thing about this guy is he's got the speed this guy has. <laughs> speed. Now, 27, speed. I'll say 27 is rolling now. 426 in the uh, 40. 27 is rolling. <laughs> I mean, but, but the thing about it is the – the design of these plays is the reason that they're getting through. And all he's got to do is really make one guy, one guy miss because that he's, he's going to have this really digs probably digs is responsible for, you see how digs six mm -hmm. up there. So six is playing coverage, but then they say, okay, if, if it's a run, then hat on a hat, man on a man, you've got, you've got the quarterback and, but it's 11 on 11 now instead of being 10 on 11. And you've got two free guys from coming from somewhere. And, and then 27, yeah, twenty seven. He was in a good position. Freaking too. rolling. Whew. Now the, you got to go for the strip at that point too. You might as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the last one here is so you've you've seen what about six seven runs eight runs. Right. Yeah. Now what? But now you you still know that he has to start to throw the ball, but you've kind of lulled you, Seattle to sleep at this. You've point. You've lulled him to sleep at this point. Oh yeah. And what a throw. All they're all they're playing here is is an, another version of quarter quarter half or quarters. This could be just straight quarters when it gets over there. Because if you watch here, yeah, it's quarter, quarter, half. So he's got the half. He's really the, the cloud defender here. He's playing a quarter. He's playing a quarter. And they just send three verticals right up your – Like this. And that's hard because right now you're you're running this guy out. You're running this guy out. This Then you get a shallow coming, which takes this guy out. Now it's on digs to make the play. And those are right up the middle. I mean, it, it's, it's a it's a double-edged sword – for Seattle for, for yeah, that the saints have against Seattle. Mm -hmm. And right now you could, he could easily he still, still run in this. He could still too. run power. You could still literally run power right here and pull him around. You, you could literally run power. And that's the same play as if you had another, a quarterback and a back in there. It's so they, they've got this thing set up pretty good to where they can, uh, and he doesn't even fake run it. He doesn't no. do any sort of show to where no, he, and you have to step up. He he's just he doesn't necessarily have, have to. to, right? He he's just dropped back and pass. This literally is that's that's just called we we just used to call this delta shallow. I'll show you from the it's it's the three it's the you're you're running four verts with a with a shallow cross. So it's an empty style play. So when he gets over to that side, he's he's the outside vert. He's the seam throw. He's really going across, but since it's covered two, he took it up the middle. He's running deep. And then this guy right here is running the shallow cross, and he'll stop and be the check down if need be. He takes the place of the back in protection that's checking down. And you can see, too, this is also Camara down here, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, getting, you're getting personnel groupings that are screwing them up. Right, and because – like they're kind of using Kamara in the Andy Dalton role in this Wildcat stuff, yeah. but you still have to you have to respect him more than you have to respect obviously Andy Dalton because of his playmaking ability. I, w I would hope that they're respecting forty one. Well, yeah, there, I would so. think so. That's what I'm saying. So it's not just a corner standing out there. He's like, well, forty one could yeah. be involved in this. All right, Stewie, appreciate you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing to come out of of that study is, do you leave the quarterback on the field versus? Do you do what the the Saints are doing? But the biggest issue with that is, can these other guys throw? And if you've got a guy, if you're Dallas or the Giants or the Colts or whoever it is that I showed that are running that, throw the, throw the ball once. Just, you have to. Just throw it once. Just have them throw a quick out. Literally, just have them throw a quick out, and then all of a sudden changes your changes entire everything perspective because, from the defensive side, right? Because when you're when you're breaking film down as a coach, you look at that and you say. They could, they could throw it, and especially if he's got a good arm. Like the 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 Bengals the other day tried the uh, Philly special with Tyler Boyd. Well, Tyler Boyd can chunk the ball. I've watched it, and everybody knows he can throw the ball. So you, you can't, you know, a lot of those things, if you put Tyler Boyd at, at wild. But, uh, again, appreciate Citizens Bank being the uh, being the telestrator so, sponsor for us. And, uh, you know, again, Caskey's clicker today. Uh, appreciate Rohan Davey coming in, Lloyd, Stewie. Y'all have been awesome. Jordy, Jordy poked his head in for yeah, you get one that, yeah, quick you get second. That, there you're, that's and, uh, the Jordy Collado way. And you know what, though? He starts your show off for you, and then he I'm, guides you down the river. Keeping, I'm keeping his seat warm, so Jordy, your seat is warm. There so, we go. Until next time, appreciate again, appreciate Citizens Bank, and uh, we'll see you next time, Caskey's Clicker.
Gonna mute the mics now. Yeah, turn those things off.